Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and I am going to say something about, um, the Rapture. I haven't said anything about the Rapture for a long time, and, um, I haven't been studying about the Rapture, but I'm going to tell you something about what's going on in the, with the Rapture. So, the, 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 the title of the video, I believe, is going to be called Evidence of the Rapture or, symb or Symbolic Rapture. So, right now we have the symbolism of the rapture, which is basically what we are blindly seeing by, not literally blindly seeing by it, but, you know, the symbolism of the rapture is something like this. We have Israel being born in one, you know, one day. We have prophecies, and they're being um, answered, we're be, we're, all the prophecies are happening and they're coming off the page, pages of the Bible like, no, tomorrow, today. But really are they coming off the pages of the Bible like, no, tomorrow? Like, is it happening every day? And I believe I'm going to answer this by saying, well, not to be exactly sure about certain situations, but I'm going to tell you that the rapture is not really as close as you think it is. Unfortunately, as what the person means by off the pages of the Bible really just indicates that it's basically what's going on today is, you know, every prophecy that we have are happening every week to every month. Right now, every week. However, sometimes it's not every week and it's just what people mean by off the pages of the Bible means by weather events and all that war and everything else that is pertaining to prophecy which is happening all at once all the time what I mean by that is it's just not repeated it's just more than repeated it's an event that's basically always happened since the 90s and we've always had war since World War One but the world the wars have always continued since World War two so, in that term, we haven't had we haven't had weather events like that has been staying on since the late '90s, and um, then we haven't had people pushing for its. You know, <clears throat> things that continue are basically from from things that started, and we we are getting new things like pestilence, and that's just a major thing. Anything that starts in a major way. Will continue to come in a major way. We've had rise in protests since Obama's term, and we've had pestilence and disease since COVID. So, what about it? Are we going by symbolism? Of course not, because the only symbol, the only symbolism we have that's accurate enough for all of us is actually just saying, well. This generation shall not pass until all these things have happened. And unfortunately, all these things are starting to happen. And, well, then the rapture will happen. At, that's the final thing that's going to happen. And it's not going to, it's going to end uh, sooner than that. And what generation was that? Well, we're already passing a generation that is known about the uh, Israel um, being born in one hour. That is exactly, in one day, it's like in not one hour. That's the only thing that people will, that's basically, almost everyone that is seen Israel being born, were actually deceased now, and are deceased. Because, well, you would have, basically to understand Bible prophecy like that, back in the 40s, you'd have to be the above the age of 15. Which in 1948 to 19, um, yeah, you would have to be like, like 32 years old. Like, you would have to be born in 1932. And that's basically the start of these things. And what's 1932 to nine? It's guys. Um, 1932 to 2022 is like 90 years old. And that's that's not even close to being a generation thing. That's past generation. 
that's what the Bible says, actually. So, it's not realistic. So, the next thing I want to tell you is, what generation is going to pass? Well, it's the baby boomers. Those are, that's the generation that we're going in right now. And the first year is 1949. I think 48 or 49. I, I don't know. Yeah, actually 1948. So the first year the baby boomers started was 1948. And the last year was um, 19, the early 60s, obviously. So, yeah. Sorry to bu burst a bubble, but if the generation does not pass, I mean, my dad's in the baby boomer generation, and so is my mom. Barely, too. And if you're saying, well, these people are not passing, then why is the final year for that to happen? Well, if you say, well, 19, if you say 2040, 20, then you're very close off um, to a year of when the first beginning of the baby boomers started, and that's that hasn't passed yet, because we're getting to 2060 when they pass, which is 100 years old, which is when people start to live longer. So, let me tell you something. It's 2040 plus 20. It's, it's basically they'll be 80 years old when it comes to like 2040. So, plus we'll have years cut off from that. So, if we don't have actual things happening that are dramatic in nature until 2030 and 2035, let's say, if we don't have robots taking over the world by 2036 and so on, we could be living through a lot of heartache. And what I mean by a lot of heartache? Well, weather events that we've never seen before. Right now we're seeing volcanoes. That's that's a new thing. And hurricanes, well, that's not a new thing. Actually, it's close. Well, um, volcanoes. And new weather events. But that just started this year. Last year was a pestilence. This year is just uh, volcanoes. And if every major event starts every year, well, what do we have left in the Bible? We still are... You know, we're still wondering about certain events that are going to happen in the Bible. We're wondering, you know, all these prophecies may have been answered to us, like all the knowledge that we have today since the 60s, and then 80s, we have all the knowledge, and then the 90s, we have more knowledge, especially by 2000s, we've had all the knowledge. However, are we going to have robots take over the world? Because we don't know what the mark of the beast really is. Unfortunately, we just do not know that. And to say, well, <laughs> quarter of the population dies. I mean, it's sudden, but somehow I think it's more likely that people are going to go cold. That's not the last thing. That's the second last thing, I believe. That people are going to go so cold that they're going to persecute us beyond persecution. Do you know that in America and almost all over the pl all over the world, people are not going cold in the Christian, in, not even in the Christian um, churches. They're actually not. So my point, my um, my thesis or something like that, to say that you know the the fact that the church is not growing cold. And going against all the people that say, well, those are just, those are just lukewarm people. Well, if you're wondering, we will have to first have the church go against, like the people in the church realize something is very wrong with the church. And then for then for them to have all atheist people go against the, the few remaining. And the last thing that ever happens is no one's saved anymore. And when I see one video of people, let's say, for under a hundred thousand like um, subscribers, I've noticed that their channel has been getting people to sell like for every church in 
like part of the worlds that are not good, like not for Christians. Every for every hundred people, over fifteen people are being saved, and that is not a number we'll be seeing in the end times. Nor will be we be seeing that next to the rapture. When we have the rapture happening, no one's going to be saved anymore. No one's going to be saved. It may take seven days for that no one to be saved. For God to see, wait, I've got to take, I've got to do business here, because sin is going too rampant. And people going against the church, that has not happened yet. I'm afraid. Even worse. That stuff takes years. And that hasn't happened yet. And my own personal evidence right now is that I still have had dreams that prove that my life is still going to go as norm on as normal until a certain time. When angels start to prophesy and even go into all entertainment forms, that's when we have a wake-up call that something is something is going wrong, that something has gone wrong in the church. And then when they leave, then that's when they, the church goes cold. And when they, when the church goes cold, that's when the people will no longer be saved, because everyone thinks that the church is evil and all that, and they will go go up to persecute you, even in America. So. Be on guard for what these people are do like. Be on guard for what people are doing these days, because we may be close, but we still have to run the battle and run the race of. And this is not just a 100-yard dash race. This is like a 100-yard dash race at the same speed, but for miles. We have to run for the miles. For our faith in God so that we don't basically kill ourselves and just leave the remnant behind to not have salvation anymore there will be those that will basically lose their lives because of depression because of how bad things are going to get in the church no one's going to be saved anymore now is this starting to happen? well on YouTube it is on the internet it is but not in the church it's only started since COVID-19 that people are not going to church anymore and not hearing about it. But pe people are not rebelling against the church right now. And in America and other places like that, people are demanding that we have our freedoms that are basically for Christianity. We're demanding that we get our rights back, our privileges back, and especially our religious freedoms back. People are demanding that. So we're not close to having that happen, where we actually have people literally rejecting their church. We're not close to that. So, so sadly enough, we have years on our back, and that cross is going to be heavy for those who are weak. But it's going to be light for those who are going to be faithful. And just remain confident that God's going to take care of them. Because the first part of the uh, tribulation, which is not tribulation at all, is thing running rampant. It's going to get so bad that it's going to go in the church. The second part of it is God's judgment, where there's two other tribulations. The, so the first strike is the Christians and everyone else going against each other against God. The two other strikes, sadly enough, basically are his judgment against sin. So, three tribulations. Part one of tri tribulation and part two of this tribulation. Part one are these weird and strange weather events and things, strange things going on in this world that we've never seen before, like technology and all that, for example. Yep. That's knowledge and grazing, and all these strange weather events. Part two of that is so everyone being becoming so sinful that, well, we're just 
hypocritical and just horrible people that want to go against God. The next part of it is the tribulation, part one of tribulation, where everyone is literally being judged by God because of what they've done against him. Part two is his mercy and even worse um, judgment because he will destroy those who will never go towards him. His mercy is going to go on those people like um, Torture of Christ Ministries. Basically, I think he's, I believe he's a um, witness, one of those two witnesses. He's going to tell these people to bring his wrath upon his people. And that's not his people. And truly enough, people that we know are in the church, that are still in the church as a lordship salvationist, they have to go through as Jews and as Christians. And those people will, quite frankly, be in tribulation, but also be persecuted against all the sinful people. And it's those religious people that are going to be saved forever. And they tell you that much right there. And that's not for every one of them that are religious, because some of them will choose to no longer be religious in this time to come. However, Many will choose God in the end days because, well, they didn't know what salvation was. And they were the ones basically trying to escape the church and they didn't want to be Christians anymore, so they want to be Jews. And the rest of the Christians, well, they'll be going as going for the mark of the beast and perishing going to hell. Because that's what's all what's go, what's going on. And even worse is these people are going to follow, follow Satan, these Christians. And it's the Jews that are going to be saved. For some part of it, you know. So just, be, so just to be clear. The only way you're going to be saved is in the tribulations when you're going to get your head cut off. And that kind of includes um, Torch of Christ Ministries as well. And for his followers too. However, what I'm seeing right now is the people in church that are begging to get the church back. And, like I said, we have time left. And I'm going to end in this note. This is what salvation is. Getting wisdom is one part of it, but it's just not a part of it. Pray for wisdom, that you understand this word, that you understand what's going on in the Bible. Then the next part is salvation. And admit that you have sin in your life. Then believe that Jesus took away all of your sins on the cross. That he was perfect in performance and he could do that. And the last part is calling upon Jesus to admit, to actually, um, Accept that he did that for you. Accept him. Just just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And once you accept that he did that for you, you will most likely be saved. And if you are saved, you will have a changed life, and then you will never lose that salvation. Just remember that, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay? Bye.